Hello everybody, my name is George Castro and in this quick video I'm going to show you how to get Kubernetes up and running quickly and easily in AWS. For this we're going to use two tools, Juju and Conjure Up. First let's add the PPAs for both of these. We're working to bring these updates to Ubuntu 16.04 so soon you won't even need the PPAs. After adding the PPAs, do a quick apt update. Then you can install Conjure Up with a quick sudo apt install conjure dash up. Now just run Conjure Up with conjure dash up. Conjure will give you a list of big complicated software to deploy into clouds. In this case, we're going to pick Kubernetes. So scroll down using the arrows till you hit the canonical distribution of Kubernetes and hit enter. Now we're going to pick the cloud that we want. For this example, we're going to pick AWS, so we just hit enter. Now Conjure will prompt us with our Amazon credentials. Use the arrow keys and tab to maneuver these buttons until add credential is green and hit enter. Now we get to configure our cluster. This will show you all the applications that we're planning on deploying on AWS, starting with EasyRSA, etcd, flannel, a load balancer, and then a Kubernetes master and three Kubernetes workers. We can configure the entire deployment of the cluster from this screen. So for example, if we wanted more Kubernetes workers, we can come down here to configure, hit enter, and deploy five workers instead of three. We can also go into the advanced configuration for each of these applications to make the deployment be exactly how we want. For now though, we're gonna pick all the defaults. So as you can see here, we're now doing five Kubernetes workers and we're ready to go. So now we can deploy each of the applications by just hitting enter on the deploy buttons. Now what's happening is we're launching what we call a controller node in AWS. This AWS controller node will handle all of our application modeling in AWS. So for example, it will handle ensuring that EZRSA launches, that the Kubernetes workers and the masters install and launch. After this controller node is launched, then we'll start to see all the other applications begin to launch afterwards. While we're waiting for this, let me kind of explain what the canonical distribution of Kubernetes is. It is a pure upstream distribution of Kubernetes. And what we mean by that is that you get the pure released version of Kubernetes from upstream. There are no patches applied to it or any special things that we alter. You get the pure upstream experience um, and we do this to make upgrades and maintenance and operations easier for everybody. What we do bundle is what you see here with Conjure Up and what we call our Juju Charms, which are the operational expertise developed by the community on how to deploy these applications on these instances. So for example, when these nodes start to come up, the workers and the masters will configure themselves to talk to each other. The etcd cluster will come up first, will set up a certificate authority, and all of that is done in the proper order as you would expect if you were doing this in production. We've taken all of this knowledge from the community and distilled that into code. And that's what allows us to deploy this onto a cloud repeatedly and on multiple clouds and bare metal as well. So the value you get from canonical distribution of Kubernetes isn't just putting pure Kubernetes on disk. It's the configuration and setup for you that we've handled for you. Everything I'm showing you here is free and open source software. And as we find people deploying Kubernetes in production, we're able to take all of the best practices that they're enacting in production and put that in this code that you can update and up upgrade over time. So essentially, every single time someone who's deploying the canonical distribution of Kubernetes finds a bug or finds an improvement, something that can make it better, uh, that enables us to ship it for everybody else. So our controller node is almost done here and then we'll move on to the actual deployment of the cluster itself. Now that the bootstrapping process is complete, 
this controller will now go ahead and deploy all of these applications in AWS. Now, if you remember, we did ask for five Kubernetes workers, and there they are. If I bring over my Amazon control, my Amazon console rather, we can see all the instances being fired up in the cloud. By default, we give you M3 mediums, but in the bundles that we ship, which are just simple YAML files, you can easily ask for specific instance types here. It's just by default, we give you M3 mediums so you can get up and running quickly. And there they go, they switch to running. Now, if we get this back out of the way, I can explain to you what the screen does. Each of these is an application that we're modeling in AWS. And underneath each is what we call the workload status. The workload status will tell us exactly what's happening on that machine at any given point. Um, currently, right now, we're all waiting for machines because they are all being fired up in AWS. And of course, ensuring that you're getting the latest image, that updates are installed, all the kind of things that you would normally associate with creating a cluster in the cloud. We, we just handle automatically for you. After that, we start to install the Charm software. This is that operational code written by the community that allows us to not just splat the binaries on disk, but also relate the applications with each other. And as you pay attention to the workload statuses, you'll see at some point, some applications stop while they're waiting for another piece of software on another node to complete and so on. So the first thing that we need to wait for is for the etcd cluster to stand up. And you'll see here in a few minutes, it's going to need the certificate authority to be up and running for it to actually uh, complete its tasks. So this is something that is all automated. You're not expected to actually follow these steps in any way. All of these charms are event driven. So uh, if an application is waiting on something, it will be obvious to you. And then you just wait for the other one to complete. As we can see here, the certificate authority is the first node that's up and ready. As we can see here, it is now active. And we see here etcd1 was blocked while it was waiting for the certificates from the certificate authority. So once it realized that the certificate authority was available, it went ahead and requested the certificates. And there's node one of the etcd clusters now ready. Though in this example, we only have one master. We do support fully horizontally scaling the master and the workers uh, separately. So the masters are available as a separate control plane for you to horizontally uh, scale independently of the workers. And as we can see, our first worker is now online. Okay, so we're back a few minutes later and now all the kubelets are finally starting to start and we're just waiting for the last two workers. And there we go, green all across the board. Now what we're gonna do is grab the cube control client from the master node and copy it to your local machine so you can interact with the cluster. So just hit enter here. Now we'll run a quick status to show you that the cluster is up, running, and healthy. And there we go. There's your summary, and there's your first Kubernetes cluster. Let's have a look. We can now quit out of this with Q, and we've copied over Cube Control onto your local system. So we've quit out of Conjure Up now. Now we want to ensure that Cube Control is working. Running a quick cluster info will connect to our cluster and show us that everything is up and running. If you look in dot cube in your home directory, you also find the config file to your cluster. If you do multiple deployments of Kubernetes with Conjure Up, we'll stick multiple config files in here and name them accordingly so that they're not colliding with each other. So now that you have cube control, you can go ahead and continue following the upstream Kubernetes documentation to uh, administer and use your actual cluster. 
And that's it. Thanks. We hope you enjoyed this quick presentation on how to get Kubernetes up and running on AWS. And as always, we'd love to hear from those of you using this and letting us know how we can make it better.